Hello, fellow book questers. It is I am doing a quester. So today, I am not here to review you guys any particular kind of book. Today, I am actually here because I have been currently rereading the Ranges Apprentice series. Now, that's like eleven books, and then not including the Royal Royal Ranger trilogy, of course. But anyway, that's oh, that's eleven books, and I just wanted to tell you guys. What the countries and the armies and the battles in the books are based on? Let's talk talk about the original versions. I mean, the versions that are in the book and in the original versions that actually existed in the real world. Well, let's get right on to it. First of all, the Araluans. Now, Aral the Araluans are the basically they are the classic Western fighters. There's the knights or the cavalry. Who are professional soldiers, and they're usually on a mount, usually a horse, and they have have a lance, they have a long sword, and they fight with it. Then, of course, there's the army, who are mostly a couple hundred villagers and people who live in that country, who are summoned when there is war to make up the bulk of the army. Then, of course, there is the force of rangers with huge longbows to shoot at enemies. That's the classic Western style that was used throughout Europe, and yeah, that's the Aralans. The Scandians. The Scandians are obviously based on Vikings, sea pirates, and raiders. And Vikings, Scandians, use these huge battle axes, or sometimes even maces, in order to smash their enemy into pieces. And they were, they were, they had no sort of organization or anything. They would just get a battle axe, get in there, and smack some people. That's how they fought. And they basically went into this berserker rage kind of thing and just swung their axes around, round, round, and just killed everything in their path. Um, the Temujai. Now, the Temujai are actually based on the Mongol army, who legitimately brought fear to Europe. They brought Europe to their knees, and they are till now known as one of the greatest conquerors of all time. They had a recurve bow. They had light armor, and they rode around in fast horses. And they would move around, shooting their recurve bows. And when it came to it, using their short sabers to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And te the Temujai actually brought the European continent down onto their knees. It's kind of because. Knights. There's knights in heavy armor, and then usually what Europeans do, they line up, then there's the spearmen, and they charge at each other. Usually there's a cavalry who charges too. There's row of archers behind who shoot at each other, and then yeah, or sometimes they have to siege a castle. But the Mongols, that is not how they fought. They would move around quickly on horses, shooting at them, whittling down the numbers, and and then just they were just much more faster than European armies, and they could probably destroy ten castles in three times faster than a European army ever could. So yeah, they brought down the European continent to these knees. And in the Rangers Apprentice books, we find the Vikings, Scandians, and the Mongols, Temujai, fighting. And now they are two armies that has never met in battle. And yeah, it was really, really interesting to see those two infamous warrior tribes armies of the past fighting each other. It's kind of one of those crossovers, you know. It feels like like Iron Man vs. Luke Skywalker, Superman vs. Hulk. That's how this kind of feels, and that is one of the reasons why the Rangers Apprentice series is so popular and so fresh. And next, we'll talk about the Aridi, the Bedouins, and the Toscans. Now, the Aridi are a desert country who lives in a big desert, and usually they have short bows, usually recurve bows, so they have a couple archers, but they aren't like disciplined like the Araluan archers who have huge longbows and they all line up, and they're expert shooters and they can shoot really, really fast. The Aridi are mostly not that good. And they are good, sure, for sure, but it's the Rika bow does not have the power of a huge longbow, classic longbow that Aralans used. And when it came to combat, they usually used sabers and also spears, so a basic army, basically. 
The Bedouins were a nomadic tribe who lived in the Sahara Desert. Well, in some sort of desert. It might not be the Sahara Desert. Fact check me on that. And basically, in in this book, in um, in the Rangers Apprentice series, they show up a couple of times and they help the Aridi um, fight some bad Bedouin tribes who wanted to, you know, really raid people and kill people. So. And yeah, the Bedouins are excellent fighters. They aren't like special, like we don't remember them particularly for their skills, but there are many of them and they are excellent warriors with their sabers. Now the Toscans are basically, they're like, they're also another country uh, in the Rangers Apprentice series and they only appear once in the start of this book, the Emperor of Nihonja. Now these guys, they're basically the Romans in the Rangers Apprentice world. They're divided into units, and they hide behind huge shields. And they would get a sword, a short sword, a saber, more likely. And they or and they would, and every time they saw body parts through through the little little um little gaps between the shields, they would just whack it. There was nothing. There was no skill. Nothing was required. All it required was di was discipline and coordination of the soldiers. And now, they didn't train bowmen either. They had javelins, very crude weapons, which would do massive, massive damage to a classic western army. And yeah, that's the Romans of this, of this book. And of course, the samurai. Now, the samurai, the samurai, known as the senshi in this book, and the Emperor of Nihonja, they are the elite warrior class of Japanese culture. Now, I've lived in Japan for a quite a long time. I'm in Korea right now, but I did live in Japan before. And what the thing is, um, they wield their katanas, which is actually the Japanese w Japanese word for sword. So it's like saying the European knights wielded swords. The samurais used katanas. The samurai used swords. It's the same thing. Although it does sound cooler, doesn't it? And basically, the senshi, I will refer to them as the senshi because that's how they refer to them in the Rangers Apprentice books. They are excellent trained warriors, and they are excellent with the katana. They are trained with the katana from very early age, and they master the sword. And yeah, they're deadly warriors, and they had a very good sense of honor. And usually they would like 1v1 each other in a death duel or something. Pretty cool, huh? And yeah, that's pretty much everyone who appears in the Arrangers Apprentice series. Now, of course, there's the Kikari who fight in the Roman way and the Emperor of Nihonja because they had to improvise. But that was a stroke of genius and creativity, but it isn't really based on any real Japanese army. It's just based on the Roman guys. So basically, Mr. John Flanagan has used every single type of army that has ever existed in the world. Most of them. The classic western with their knights, their armies, and their archers. The, the vikings, ship fighters, pirates with huge battle axes and no coordination whatsoever. The Temujai elegant on their horses and shooting their recurve bows and using their sabers. The classic desert warriors yeah, usually with bows and sabers, not famous too much for anything, but still appears. The Roman way of fighting, banding together, trusting the unit, stabbing with their swords, and basically having a shield wall and just discipline. Legioneers, you know, Romans. And yeah, and of course the Japanese, in infamous warriors for using their sword. It's a pity that Koreans didn't come out, but the thing is, the Korean fighting way Ancient Korean fighting way, for example, from Kokuria, Kokuria or Baekje or Shilla. It's mostly the same as the Mongol way of fighting: riding horses, shooting recurve bows, and using your, using their swords and their lances when necessary. Of course, there were foot soldiers, but in that way, it's more similar to the normal Western system. So, yeah, and that is pretty much it. Like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. Today I talked about the armies and the type of battle styles that they used in the ancient history and in the Rangers of Princess series. Hope you found that interesting. Goodbye.